Hello and welcome to part two of this Jack and Jill shower room series. Today we're going to roll our sleeves up and start cutting holes in ceilings and wiring up electromagnets. So keep watching. So if you haven't watched part one of this series, I recommend you take a quick look. Basically, we explained the challenge that we have with a Jack and Jill shower room. This is a shower room with two doors going into two separate bedrooms in a shared house. Uh, we have two main challenges. One is to stop a tenant going through the shower room into the other tenant's room. And the second challenge is to stop a tenant walking into the shower while someone else is having a shower. Uh, it's quite an interesting uh, solution and we go into it in some detail in the other video, so take a look at that. Now it's time to roll our sleeves up, actually go to the property and actually start doing some work. So this is what the actual room looks like. That is the light switch in the centre of the frame there and you can see the PIR next to the light there that has up until now just controlled the light uh, and turned it off when people aren't in the shower. Looking from the other angle, you can see the two doors on the left and right of the screen, um, and at the moment those have just got normal locks on them. So I realised that um, something that may well need attention and maintenance uh, over time is the transformer. Um, so actually to make life easy for myself, I actually picked up one of these, which is uh, an inspection panel. Uh, which I put in the ceiling, which enabled me to get to the transformer very quickly and also just helped actually in the installation because it meant I didn't have to do much repair work on the ceiling. So the first thing I did was actually work out where that was going to go and a little trick I do is I use a bradle or a small screwdriver here just to make holes around the uh, potential cutout just to make sure I'm not hitting any joists because obviously you want to have a clear space behind that when you cut it out uh, and so a good way of just checking that is to is just to poke some holes in the ceiling. And then I use a pad saw to cut that out. And as you can see, the uh, inspection panel itself fits in very neatly. Um, it's, it just makes everything so much more straightforward. Okay, so the next thing that I did was uh, to work out where the actual uh, magnetic locks were going to go and that involved a little bit of marking up just to work out where um, the frame was compared to the door. I did this on both doors. I decided not to remove this sticker on the door just purely because it was going to take the paint off. Um, the locks come with these templates which really help in drilling the holes. So this first hole in the middle of the template is uh, goes all the way through the uh, door and then these two smaller holes are for the location pin. You can see these actually just bang into the metal plates. So one thing that I hadn't realized when I first put these plates on the door is these rubber washers are designed to go between the plate and the door. They're very important and what they do is allow the plate to actually rock um, side to side to enable them to line up properly with the electromagnet. If you don't do that, you won't, almost certainly won't get a good um, connection and so you won't get a locking door. Okay, so the next challenge is how we get power to these locks. What I've done here, I've actually drilled at an angle through the frame uh, and I come out on the, uh, the wall inside the bathroom. A little bit untidy, but uh, absolutely functional. And I think for a, for a um, shared student house, it's absolutely fine. Next job was to cut a hole in the ceiling for the lock switch. Uh, and as you'll see, I've used the same technique here of the bradle making holes to just check that I wasn't gonna hit any joists. And as you'll see, I actually did discover there was a joist. And so I have actually adjusted slightly where the hole goes. And before I start working on the main side of this, um, I can't emphasize this enough, isolate the power and then check that the lights are then off and use a voltage detector or something similar just to confirm you've isolated the circuit. So that transformer is connected to the PIR and I'm just wiring in those 12 volt cables, which I extended in the end, at the end of the previous episode. And then I'm wiring up the pull switch. Okay, so I've actually finished the installation now. I really wanted to uh, just leave some of these things out just so you could see what was going on. So this was the original PIR. This was installed 
in the bathroom before I got here and it basically controls that light. So what we've done, we've taken advantage of that PIR, we've basically taken uh, the neutral and switch light out of that in a cable that goes all the way across to this pull switch. From the pull switch it goes down into the transformer and the output from the transformer, the two 12 volt feeds, go down these cables into the two locks. And so when you pull, and if I turn it on the lock, you'll see the door down a bit and pull, but then it's locked. And then you pull it again, and then you can open the door. Um, I put this little inspection panel in here just because it's easy to get to, and I know transformers notorious for failing and we want an easy way to be able to get to that transformer if it does fail. Another learning is that originally I put handles with a twist lock on the inside of the room and a key slot on the bathroom side and I had to remove them because I realised that you could lock the handle while the door is open, walk into the shower room, close the door and then lock yourself in which of course we can't have. So I've actually removed those, replaced them with just standard handles with no locking mechanism and I put some bolts on the room side of the doors so the tenants can lock their doors from their rooms safely and securely. It also means it is impossible for them to go in the shower and lock themselves in through those bolts. The other thing to say is I put some nice um, posters up here just to explain how the switch works. And I've also said at the bottom, in an emergency, the lock can also be deactivated by switching the room light off. Really important. I would really like to happen, but if for some reason this, lock, this switch got stuck in the on position, there is a potential for someone to get locked in the bathroom. So obviously having that as a sort of fail safe deactivation mechanism is really, really handy. Another thing to say is if there's a power cut, because the power is cut, these immediately unlock. So again, it's a fail safe. No one is going to get locked in here. So I just used a bit of uh, filler just to fill in some of the holes that I put in the ceiling to test where um, the joists were. Um, I will paint this room as well, um, just to neaten things off a little bit. So this is how it works for a tenant. Uh, they have the bolt there, which means that their room is absolutely secure from the other tenant uh, walking through from the shower. They unlock it from this side, which means they can't lock themselves in the shower. Going in, they can then activate the modesty lock here. There's an indication on the actual switch itself saying on. And then these magnetic locks are now activated and that door is now locked, even if it wasn't locked from the room side. Then they can go in and have their shower. That's what this switch is for, just the power shower. And then they deactivate the lock to leave the shower. And of course, if for some reason they forget to do that, this PIR will actually deactivate the lock after the room has been empty for a few minutes. Hopefully you found that of use. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do hit that subscribe button. It really does make a difference. It would be great if we could actually start monetizing these videos. And to do that, we need over a thousand subscribers. So please, if you enjoy the content, you'd like to see more, click that subscribe and it really, really does help. Got some really interesting ideas lined up for more videos and it'd be great to be able to bring those to YouTube so you can see them. So fingers crossed, hopefully I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.